Now to the latest on former President Trump's hush money trial. His former attorney and fixer Michael Cohen on the stand facing cross-examination. Trump denying all wrongdoing. So joining us now with the latest, we have ABC senior investigative correspondent Aaron Katursky, ABC's executive editorial producer John Santucci. No court today, which is why you're free to be here in Times Square with us. Thank you both for being here. Thanks. Obviously, the former fixer Michael Cohen on the stand this week. Aaron, what have been the big takeaways from his testimony so far? I think no other witness at this trial has tied Donald Trump to the alleged falsified documents, the crime, than Michael Cohen. He said Donald Trump was right there to negotiate the deal with Stormy Daniels, approved of the $130,000 hush payment, and then signed off on the reimbursements to Cohen after he fronted the money. The jury saw all these documents, and Michael Cohen is the only witness to tie Trump to each and every one. So we have to talk about the people yeah. in the courtroom, because it has, as much as there's going on on the stand, there's also yeah. a lot happening in the seats. Uh -huh. there, people have been coming to sort of show face. <laughs> I mean, the cast of characters you can't make up, right? Even yesterday when we got a call, Eva, that the Speaker of the House was going, like, going where? I mean, the fact that he's in a courtroom right behind Donald Trump, criminal court, the guy that is second in line to the presidency. Talk about also how many United States senators have gone at these proceedings so far. I mean, listen, I I've covered Donald Trump since his first campaign. People that wanted to be his VP years ago, the audition process was go do an interview. This time is, will you come to court with me? I mean, it's really just remarkable. Even the fact that you have his son and daughter-in-law, who's now number two at the RNC, it shows Donald Trump's hold on the Republican Party. Part of it is the fact that, you know, it's to keep him calm because these proceedings, obviously, some of it has been extremely upsetting to him. It's part of the reason why he's tuned out and closed his eyes for a lot of it. But I think the other part of it is to show this image. Look at the image of just yesterday where everyone's behind him as he's talking. This is where he should be with them out on the campaign trail, not in this courtroom. I mean, the pictures as they're walking out are just astounding. Yeah. One after another, all those people that are in court. So cross-examination resuming tomorrow. Michael Cohen's still on the stand. Mm -hmm. What do we expect from that, but also the rest? of the trial. We've just gotten started with sort of the character assassination of Michael Cohen because the defense is out to assail his character yeah. and his motivation. They've already said he's out for money, he's out for recognition and relevance, and he is obsessed, the defense said, with seeing Trump convicted. And they confronted him with all the unflattering thing, names that he has called Donald Trump of late, the, the Cheeto-dusted cartoon villain, the, the boorish misogynist. And Michael Cohen said, yep, yeah, the, the Sounds like something I would say. And they're trying to say you can't trust this witness and you can't pin the crime on Trump if you're only taking Michael Cohen's word for it because he has an agenda. Right. John, how's Trump doing with all this? It's interesting. You know, the Stormy Daniels testimony was extremely hard for him to hear it and for his family to hear it. Although when you talk to his team, they actually think part of it was good for them because of how much detail she went into that they think it may have turned people off. I do think the big question coming towards the end of this, Eva, is do they put on a defense? Look, Donald Trump has said famously, I'm a counterpuncher. I have talked to multiple sources close to the former president. They firmly believe, don't put on a defense, don't testify. We know Donald Trump is hedged on this question, right? Will he, won't he? Everyone has said, get this over with and run away from it and wrap it. And, and in fact, the judge asked defense attorney Todd Blanche, mm -hmm. outside earshot of the jury, is your client going to testify? And, and Blanche said he still didn't know and went on to suggest that the defense may call no witnesses at yeah, all. That's going to wrap. I've heard both of you talk about how basically in a courtroom is the only time Donald Trump can't be in complete control of everything going on around him. So this it, oh, it's, it's remarkable. I mean, his schedule for the first time ever, think about it. People used to stand up for Donald Trump when he walks into a room. Now he has to stand up for this jury, for this judge. It's, it's actually a really fall from grace for him. All right. John Santucci, Aaron Katursky, great to see you both. Thank Thanks. you.